We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the gathering song, you may be seated. For the gathering song, we will sing four verses, because... The verses all fit together. Four verses of hymn 408. Come thou almighty king, hymn 408. <laughs>
pull that cup up. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the reading of the word, and for lecture and assisting ministry today, we have Stephen Martin with us, and uh, she does her own mic, her own spot, and her own shield. There we go. So, thank you for doing that. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let us let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. I have not told you from a whole and declared. You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Sheena. She and I will uh, read the psalm responsibly actors by actors. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. And glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give me your strength to your servant and save the child of your heaven. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. For the second reading, a reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with them, so that we may also be glorified with them. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing, the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our lives. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks. I invite you to stand as you are able for the Alleluia and the Gospel.
Gospel according to Matthew. The parable of the wheats and the weeds. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in, the ga in, in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the weeds along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the weeds into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. and her spirits lifted. In the days ahead, she read and reread that letter many, many times, and it gave her great comfort. Finally, after many years, the young man, now older, returned home. He said when he saw her, I am grateful, but I am also amazed that you're still waiting for me. How is it possible for me to have waited all this time? You don't even understand 
who saw you as a young woman. I believed in you because I had your letter. I had your word. We who are the friends of Jesus know very little about the future, except that one day we will be together again as he promised. And so the young, now older man and woman, they marry and they live joyfully ever after. I miss that almost as much as I miss Emily's claim. Not quite though. That's it's so good. It's great to have you here. Uh, lots of uh, what we call apocalyptic language. In, especially in Matthew, there's hints of it in St. Paul's letter to the Romans today about waiting and waiting and waiting and wanting to sort things out now and find out who the good guys are and who the bad guys are and sort them all out and be done with it. It's what I call either or language, good and evil spirit and flesh, weeds and weeds, despair and hope, suffering, glory, children of the kingdom and children of the evil. But the only thing they left out was light and dark and black and white. They ran through the list. I kind of wish they hadn't done that. Apocalyptic literature, though, likes to do this, this dramatic end of the world stuff. We have lots of games on computers that are apocalyptic, end of the world stuff, you know, big, old, flaming stuff that's still, and we have that in lots of our music and movies because it captures people's attention. It also forces us to make distinctions, to choose. And it also lends to our propensity to jump to conclusions way too soon. To break out of the tension, to resolve things now. We take abstract words like good and bad. We tend to make them concrete. I'm a good person, you're a bad person. It rarely works out the other way. Have you ever noticed that? I'm a bad person and you're a good person. Why is that? Hmm. Is this kind of language to move from speech, dangerous speech, to particular people very quickly? It's sadistic, it's polarizing, it's destructive, and we all do it. These days, these last few years, these last few months in particular, we jump too quickly. We sort things out too fast. We've been doing it for a long time, but it seems to speed it up and become more intense. It's easy to blame others, especially when I'm trying to find my way through difficult times. And so evil become evil ones who are not like us. The irreligious become people whose religious beliefs are different from ours. We could talk about political beliefs social status. We could talk about race, ethnicity, and skin color, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender and age. The list goes on and on and on. In the complexity of these times and in our anxiety about it, we want to sort things out now. We want to make it simple and clear. Who are the good guys? 
Who are the bad guys? Lock them up. Hang them high. Yes, what is simple and clear, but it's not. It's just not. Perhaps the most dangerous slogan today is those two words, liberal, conservative. They often descend the subcategories of division for many people, socialist, fascist, antifa, white supremacy. Boogaloo boys, that's one of the interesting ones. Boogaloo boys, white supremacists who wear a lot of shirts. And are heavily honored. What is going on? You sold that little shirt. Stop that. Reactionary versus progressive. Now, a disclaimer here. A disclaimer. A pro apart from Nazis, who, if you break that word down, is national and socialist? Or are they socialists or nationalists? Or, so, but apart from Nazis, and apart from white supremacists and the Boogaloo boys, I am not sure whom I precisely do not identify with anymore. Nor am I exactly sure who I identify with anymore. I'm not sure even where I want to be long anymore. There's one exception to that. And I've hinted at it already. I am a follower of Jesus. Not any Jesus. Not the magic Jesus who will protect us from the coronavirus if we all take our masks off and crowd together and hug in church and sit in a lap, right? That's not the biblical Jesus. That's heresy. That's sin. Those who say we're covered by the blood of Jesus. When it comes to a virus, are dead wrong. That's why I took a lot of care to make sure that before we started in-person worship, it was going to be sort of, kind of, really, almost up. You feel the breeze blowing through here? Yeah, it's boom. The fans are going. The thing is clean. Everybody at first service wiped all the chairs down. Your masks are on. Shields up. Shields up. Now we're in Star Wars. Star Trek. Whatever. Oh, my goodness. But we're on it. We're not making God be a magician. We're just making God be way too small. Okay, none of that's in my notes. So I just got kind of just that. All right. All right. Those of you on Zoom, are you getting it? You got it? You hear that? I'm not always sure how the nuance goes from here to there, but I hope you heard that. What I know is that I'm a follower of the crucified and risen Jesus. And that ain't easy. It's difficult. It is challenging. It can be agonizing. I just saw a picture before church started here today. Somebody sent me an image of a bunch of just fat white people in boys in burning masks. They were burning masks. Well, I hope they stay clustered together. And I hope they don't use my tax dollars or health insurance premiums to take care of them when they get sick. That's how angry I am about that sort of stuff. Stop that. Masks and shields and hand washing and physical distancing. If we all, 90% of us did it, we'd have this thing with in four to six weeks. That's what the epidemiologists have been telling us all along. And instead, we talk about my rights. Stop it. My right is to love you and love God. And wear a mask or a shield, not to protect me, but to protect you. And to live with the tension. And that may be the most important thing here, is live with the tension. And that can be crucifying. It's hard. I know it's hard. It drives me nuts. Now I live alone. I don't have to wear a mask all the time. But it, well, yeah, we're with cats. So they, I tried bringing a mask on them once. Ah, I yield up. Okay. 
is crucified. And I think that's what Jesus and Paul are saying in today's readings. When it comes to sorting, sorting things out too soon, they're saying, whoa, slow down with the either or stuff. I said, stop. Wait a minute. Stop with the sorting. Quit labeling everyone and everything. Before you go in all binary on us, listen to their words. Consider the sufferings of the present time. That's a tension sentence. Don't become slaves. Don't fall back into slavery to fear. You can't go back and make it great again. You can't go forward together either. The entire creation is groaning in labor pains. It's not the time to say, let's sell out. Okay, those of you who have babies, I'm not one of them. When you're in labor pains, you're not going to McDonald's for a milkshake. Right? No. And maybe the best of all. Let them, the weeds and the weeds, grow up together. You know, every Saturday morning, a, a few, I call them the lawn boys, show up. Paul and Russ, Eli's been showing up a bunch too. Yeah, and he's, he, he's like, he cleared this whole thing out over here, and he's just about killed himself, chopping the, the dirt up, and he's got plenty of little fertilizer over here. You know, he's going to work on some art, you know. And, and all I could think about was what they're doing when they're out there trying to get the weeds, that California grass, out of the, you know, and they're whacking away with pickaxes. And I stay in the house and pray for them. <laughs> oh, my dad. Yeah. The weed and the weeds sometimes are so intertwined that we're never going to sort this out. And so we don't fall back, we don't rush to the future, we sit with the present, with the suffering, the labor pains. In other words, and this is the first of three points I'm going to make real quick, live with the tension. Live in the present, with the past fear and the future hope in Jesus. Psalm 46 said, one of my favorite verses, cease sorting. Be still, know that I am God. To resist sorting, to refrain from jumping too quickly to conclusions, to fight the urge to demonize those who are not like us, may just be the most urgent calling of followers of Jesus today. In a world where we quickly put labels on everyone and everything, whether it's woke folk or mockatists, to live with the tension as Jesus and Paul call us to, to resist sorting is the way of the cross. It's the way of repenting, of seeing things in new ways, with a new mind, thinking differently, not feeling badly, but thinking differently, and saying, oh, could it be otherwise? Might there be other ways of finding our way around? Luther said it well. He said, we're saints and sinners at the same time, and only God can sort it out. And which one is which? Who knows? What do you need? What in us is good? What is evil? What is saved? What is damned? What is right? What is wrong? What is weak? What is weeds? And which is which, and which will be hard to tell even for the end of time. So until that time, live with attention. And then the second thing, we have to make choices. We have no choice but to make choices. Aristotle, the philosopher, millennia ago said, there is only one way to avoid do nothing, say nothing, do nothing. You can't do that. 
I can't say nothing. <laughs> Do nothing. Be not. Mm, Lord have mercy. No. Choose carefully, though. Decide humbly. Sort wisely. And then go with it. Realize that you might be wrong. And as you choose, as you find your way about, and to gather the courage and faith to take next set steps in a very sick, full, present life. Live with the tension that we might be wrong. And then step out, act, see, question, suffer, resist. Do what Luther said also sin for you. And finally, very quickly. The heart of it all, the bottom line. As I cease sorting, as I sin for I live by grace. Because the best I do, whether it's ceasing to sort or sinning boldly, it always comes up short. There's always something more to do. And so I live by God's forgiveness. We do it when we come up short, which is every day. Many of you know, you just heard a little bit of it, I have strong opinions. Sometimes they show more than others. In fact, I tend to think that they're more than opinions. They're actually very good, sound reasoning based on scripture, tradition, and history, faith, and, and uh, faith and theology, science and reason. I thought it was wrong once. Then I realized I was wrong about being wrong, so I can't decide if I'm still going to do this or if I was wrong. In any event, I have strong opinions. But trying to live by grace means that I have to hold them loosely. I have strong opinions, but by the grace of God, I hold them loosely. So, what are my strongest opinions? And I'll finish with this. Be Live with attention. Sin won't make a new vibration. If we try it, it's so many messy. If we try it, maybe, just maybe, together, near and far, we'll find our way through this. We'll find our way to that time we are again. And the end of the day is in you, but trust in God to guide you in 769. 769, we'll sing all four verses. <laughs>
invite you to stand as you are able. Let us confess together our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sisters and brothers, I invite you at this time to receive a sign of healing and fullness in the name of the Triune God. Those of you here in person who wish to receive a blessing may stand in place, and I will raise my hand and bless you. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace, that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. We receive the sign of the cross as, symbol, as a symbol of God's healing love and forgiveness. Amen. Chieko, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace, that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. We see this sign of the cross as a symbol of God's healing love and forgiveness. Amen. Mary Lou, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace, that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. We see this sign of the cross as a symbol of God's healing love and forgiveness. Amen. See now. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace, that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Amen. Receive this sign of the cross as a symbol of God's healing love and forgiveness. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Living God, through the laying on of hands and anointing, grant comfort and suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. When alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing as we continue with the prayers of intercession. We'll be led by Sina. Confident of your care and held by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Aka Hello. God of all space and time, your whole creation grows in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. You knew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of the king. Eka Aku. God of nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring enemies. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Eka Aku. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the broken hearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and for all who suffer in any way. We reach up our prayers to all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we ask to God. Dick 
and Beverly, Judy and Sherry, Bud and Berta, you are next. Thank God, I'll see you. Yeah. 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 May their days be full of laughter and life and joy. A Kahaku. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places, and saints close to us, especially those who have died providing care and service to others in these difficult times. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. A Kahaku. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Aloha nui eoko, o ki aloha, o ka haku, e maana meo, a haua. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you all. And at this point, well, two of you can hug the rest of us. There we go. To all of you out there in Zoom land, everybody's kind of going peace and waiting shopping at you. Okay, good. You may be seated here, in, uh, those of you here in person. A uh, couple of things. Uh, quite often, uh, we're still taking offerings. We still have to pay, to pay the bills. Uh, we're doing pretty good, too. Uh, there's no crisis, and your offerings are good money after good. Let's put it that way. So, uh, if you are able to still make an offering, whatever amount it is, we are ready for. Very good. And we are putting it to good use. Conversely, we make an offering to you. If there is a need on your part, it's not being met. Let us know. Don't, don't be hesitant. Don't be ashamed. We all help each other. We're in this together. So if there are any needs, we are making an offering back to you at this time. And you may let me know, contact me by email or cell phone or church handline, and uh, uh, we'll respond. We can do that confidentially. Uh, also, you may need online gifts uh, by going to not only by sending or by going to the donate button, and you go to Tidely or PayPal, or you can send your checks in, uh, drop them off uh, to the church itself. I think that's it for the offering. Uh, let's sing the offering song, those of you out there. We're going to sing the familiar tune, uh, Emily, Creating the Clean Heart, please. Spirit, let us pray that Jesus has. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated for a couple of announcements. A uh, reminder that the council meets uh, at 2 30 via Zoom this afternoon, and uh, uh, we've got a few decisions to be making there. Uh, one of them is uh, when to resume in person and maybe even extend out the virtual communion so that. Uh, Maybe early August, the first Sunday in August, we would have the uh, very individualized wafers and uh, individual cups here, wine space, and uh, the travel away cups. Also, uh, if you decide to do virtual communion, that would mean for those of you at home, you get a piece of bread, a little wine, and join us. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that in the council meeting uh, this afternoon. So stay tuned. Uh, also, stay tuned for other possible worship times. Uh, I have a little camera now that I'm going to be using at home, so maybe on Sunday evenings or Wednesday evenings, we can resume either like a small Bible study and responsive prayer, not unlike what we did last couple of Sundays. Uh, so we're going to look at some options. This is the time to be creative and see what we can do to reach people. So, um, Next week, we'll do the service of the word, uh, what we did like this. After that, stay tuned. Uh, a couple other things. Oh, I think most of you know this, but on the way out, don't cluster by the, you know, we have a little, what do you call this, uh, sanitizing section uh, with the masks and everything. Uh, but grab a disinfecting wipe, and if you wipe your seat down, please. Uh, I appreciate that. And then uh, also, don't forget to tell others about it. Tell us and tell them, you know, tell us and tell them about the in-person worship. Tell them about Zooming, YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud. In a couple hours, we'll, we'll cross those. But let people know we're here. Let's get that word out. You know, we're doing it, uh, hopefully, we're doing it pretty well. So, any other announcements? Yes, Jim. Okay, I heard secondhand, if anybody has um, a lab work for COVID-19, I hear that Wahoo Rec Center is doing a drive-by today till two o'clock. Drive through. Wahoo Rec Center is doing a COVID-19, uh, coronavirus COVID-19 test drive through at what time? Till two today. Till two today, okay, thank you. Anything else? I think IHS is October 1st. August 1st, October. Will be October something too. Okay, August 1st. Yes, I'm still in June, so okay. All right, please stand in for the benediction and the sending song. Somebody asked me to use this blessing, so I will. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Creator and the Redeemer and the Sanctifier. Amen. Can we sing all three verses of Bill, my children, with my blessing?
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.